Hi, my name is Tammy and I make a lot of turtle dog stands. Um, I keep promising people to show you how to do it. And uh, so here are some that we have made. Um, this is a taller version and uh, it was really cold and I have a bigger tarp. So I put everything as low to the ground as possible on this one. But you can see the basics of the stand. It's a tripod and then you have fence poles in the middle to keep them from um, dipping towards each other. And depending on the situation, if it's raining or something, then um, or it's going to be windy or you're where bears are or whatever, you might want to uh, tie down the stand. So what does it take to make a stand? And this is one of my older ones. So it, it's standard setup every time. So things you need to make a stand. We use uh, T-nuts, uh, 5 16 by 3 8 So we try to use everything about the same size um, on every stand so that if we're fixing a stand or uh, getting a new pole or something, we always know what we're using. And then we go to the bulk aisle and we get the uh, 5 16 um, one and a half and, and cause you need, you need longer items. And then you got to get your poles. So you need six two by twos for each stand. And we were making two of them here. And then you need two top rail fence poles to, um, make the center bits. Uh, then you also need hinges for like a barn door. And, uh, these are, I think three or four inches long. Um, I had some bigger ones and I had some smaller ones. Um, we kind of collected them and just stuck them in the drawer and down here, you can see, uh, the holes that are in, um, in it to start with. And we had to make them bigger so that the um, hooks could go through and the bolts. So um, we, we drilled them out and um, set those locking hooks in them. And we use uh, string. Um, I prefer Reflectix, but I didn't have time to wait for Amazon to send it to me. And then you got to have eye bolts with um, extra locking bolts to go on the bottom and the uh, T-nuts. So we cut the boards to the length we want. Now, uh, currently mine are seven feet tall. Each board is seven feet tall and it's a little too tall and they fit just barely in my Thule and I need to trim them down just a little bit so they fit better in the Thule. The reason we made them that tall is because my husband is 5'10 and bending over is very difficult for him. So if you don't mind bending over and you want to be closer to the ground and all that other stuff. Um, you do not have to make them that tall. Our first ones we made about, uh, each pole was about six, six. And then you got to remember they're spread out wide. So it's not actually seven feet tall. When I stand up the seven footers, it's still about, you know, it's below uh, almost six feet or something because of all the space you lose in the bottom. So, uh, we didn't get the best wood this particular trip. They didn't have uh, very good wood, um, but you want to look for the least amount of knots, the least amount of splits, um, because two by twos, uh, they can have some really crappy ones to choose from. Uh, so, oh, we cut them at six foot nine this time. Oh no, the poles. We made the poles um, six foot nine, about 81 inches um, for the poles. And those are seven feet. Okay. Um, so we cut them off using a jig. And then, uh, the thing that most people don't think about is you need to buy dowel and you want to buy dowel that is almost exactly the same size as the poles. And as you can see here, we, uh, 
trim the edges to make it fit better and uh, so he took off he you kind of got a wedge in the end on one end sorry I was taking a whole bunch of pictures here and then um, he made it he made it smaller than the hole and the best way to put it in is you stick in the end of the pole and this is the end that you are going to put the eye bolt through um, and the other end is going to be the male and female that can go together because obviously um, you want your poles to be anywhere from 12 feet something to 13 feet something especially if you're one of those people that have like an 11 or 12 foot tarp you need to have this pole long enough that your tarp fits in there and when we first made them we only used one pole and it was only like 10 feet and I had to go on Amazon and buy um, cheap tarps to go on the thing that were exactly about 10 feet otherwise they didn't fit on the uh, stand so uh, we put it you put the side that you've trimmed inside of it and then we just went out to the cement and we slammed it in there the rest of the way so that it was flush and it filled up all the space because if you're going to drill through one of these poles especially the fence pole it will um, it'll literally just collapse so you need to put something in the end that you are going to drill through so now see it's flat inside of there it trimmed itself up and it also helps keep bugs out of it when you have the stand up and you are set up somewhere okay so now we have um, the wood in the poles and we're doing the last one and then um, to help actually put the hole in there um, he used a punch to start the hole and then uh, you got to have your eye hook long enough that you have a little bit hanging out in the bottom and um, I'm not sure if I have a picture showing why but if you have a little bit hanging out in the bottom you can help use that to lock your straps onto the end so you need some above the pole and you need a little bit below the pole don't cut off the um, eye bolt okay so we measure it we figured it out and you also don't want it right there on top right you don't want it all the way at the end of the pole because you need to have a little bit of hang and the other thing that it does is this end of the pole sometimes will um, sit up against the back leg and that also helps brace it a little bit so it doesn't swing back and forth okay so here we're drilling out the holes so that our hooks will go through um, I just got the locking loops um, a lot of times my poles and everything travel in a trailer and I don't want to lose this loop because if you lose it then you can't hang anything when you get somewhere so you just just use a step drill um, to drill through to make a fit and then you punch the pole and then we drilled through the pole and um, you need somebody's help now if you can find somebody with a drill press it is way easier to do this and you know it'll stay straight but when you're doing it by hand they're not always the straightest but when we put the wood in it these are much straighter than anything else we've drilled holes in okay so now that you have your eye bolt on there you're going to use a locking nut on the bottom and put that together so this is what the edge of the turtle dog stand looks like so the hardest part um, to do is punching and drilling through the metal and then um, you just put two legs on one side and yeah they only have one in them but these actually um, can slide together and you know when you travel that's it's all just like one piece and then we used uh, two down here and as you can see I don't have really anything sticking out the edges um, because the uh, t-nuts help hold it in the wood and you don't have a lot of extra stuff sticking out so this is what we used 
um, to do this part. I know some people just use an S hook. Um, that's what my friend uses. And then she uses the second hole and she ties it straight down to the ground in case it's windy or somebody bumps into you and it helps keep your stand from falling over. Um, and this is what it looks from the side. So you can see the T nuts up, up here are locked in. So you don't really want to get bolts that are really long that stick out because they'll scratch up everything, you know, because if you're putting it in your car or um, taking it somewhere, it, it's just going to scratch all over everything. It's bad enough that you have the end sticking out here. And when you put a hammock on it, you're going to loop the hammock over the top here and come here. And then for me, most of the time, the... Uh, tarp rain fly is tied off up here. So in the summer, um, I put the um, tarp up above sometimes and in the winter, then I'll put it below. So is that the end of these pictures? Okay, one second. Okay, so I came back to the original pictures. And as you can see here, the um, stand has a string coming straight down that we've locked into the ground. There is also string down here around the bottom. You need to have something near the bottom to keep the legs from splaying out from under you because they will just go. And uh, we tried to make ours like, you know, equilateral. So you want to have the same um, distance on all of them. The front here obviously is a little bit longer most of the time than the sides, but you try to get them about the same length. And I really like using Reflectix because it keeps you from hitting things. And then the um, rain fly we tie up above to the eye loop. And then as this is a nine ox, you can also lift using the pole um, to lift it over the top. And then on this one, it was uh, very cold. So I wanted the whole um, tarp to be down closer to the ground to keep wind from coming up underneath it. And uh, what else have I learned that people don't know? The length of this pole should not be over 14 feet or 14 and a half. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the gentleman was using, but um, more than once we have seen people who have tried to use the full length of those poles or something over 14 feet. And um, the distance is just a little too much and it bends and the whole thing collapses on you. So the longest one that I have, I think is... 13 and a few inches so i haven't i haven't made anything over that we are not small people um we are you know about 200 pounds each and i have never had the whole thing shift like it was gonna come down on me in a normal situation um, there's been a couple times we've set up on hills or, you know, we've been in a very uneven place. Uh, but overall, um, these stands um, have worked really well and we have made a lot of them. So this is not just, you know, my first attempt. I think the last stand that we made uh, was number 12. Uh, because all of my friends have them because we all travel together and... <laughs> And we obviously understand your needs. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to message me. Thanks.